today's video, I'm going to be talking about the difference between general conditions and general requirements in construction. Uh, let's go! So general conditions and general requirements are two terms getting tossed around as often as a tape measure does on a job site. These two terms are also interchanged so often in construction that the definitions have become somewhat blurred together, although they mean two completely different things. So let's summarize each of these terms. General conditions are a fundamental part of the contract in commercial construction. General conditions are specific to each project based on the negotiated contract language between the owner, architect, and contractor. The general conditions outline roles and responsibilities of each of those individuals. General requirements are a fundamental part of the specifications in commercial construction. And to simplify, general requirements are administrative procedures or requirements that are to be followed throughout the course of construction. These can be found in your specification booklet. I'll get back to the general requirements in just a minute, but first I want to focus on the general conditions. Now you typically don't see or hear general conditions as often in residential construction simply because residential construction hasn't adopted the same standardized contract formats that are being used in commercial construction. Majority of residential construction is being executed using simplified contracts that are typically developed by contractors themselves. In commercial construction, because the contracts usually have a higher dollar value associated and therefore more risk, you see owners, architects, and contractors leaning more heavily towards standardized language that the industry has agreed upon in general. This is why we see terms like general conditions used in commercial construction. So here's actually one of many different AIA agreements used in commercial construction, this one being A201, General Conditions of the Contract for Construction. So here you can see a breakdown of specific articles that further summarize roles and responsibilities of each of these individuals. I'll drop a link to this AIA agreement in the description below so you can read through it after this video. There are general provisions, owner, contractor, architect, and subcontractor conditions. Also, there are sections that summarize changes in work, payment, insurance, bonds, claims, disputes, and much, much more. Now, just because this is a standardized contract doesn't mean that the owner, architect, and contractor can't cross out or add specific items. In fact, a Additional conditions are oftentimes added and referred to as supplemental or special conditions. These are to further clarify these general conditions. So when specifically focusing on the contractor as it relates to general conditions, it's important to understand who is providing what. Since the general contractor or construction managers have the responsibility of executing the scope and building the building, these general conditions often come with a cost. These costs do not become an affixed part of the building, but are still required to carry out the responsibilities throughout construction. What I mean by this is that actual material that gets installed is known as a hard cost to the project, whereas these general conditions are known as soft costs. So what are some examples of these soft costs? Well, before you start a project, you have a pre-construction team that includes estimating, scheduling, and potentially project management involvement. Also, once you start construction, these general condition soft costs can include superintendent time, project manager time, safety director time, and much, much more. In addition to all of this, the general conditions include items such as temporary toilets, dumpsters, permits, job trailers, cell phones, laptops, temporary power, site fencing, site signage, security, and any other cost that's indirectly related to getting the scope executed. So again, general conditions as it relates to a general contractor or construction manager are essentially temporary costs used throughout the course of construction to facilitate construction. So when compiling an estimate for a project, you need to ensure that you have these general conditions covered if you are the general contractor or construction manager to help facilitate the execution of the scope for all the other trades. For instance, you need a superintendent on site to watch the site activities. If the project's nine months long, you need to budget the cost for the superintendent for those nine months. You can calculate this cost by taking an hourly or weekly rate of the individual and multiplying it out by nine months. Same thing with a job site trailer. There's usually a delivery, a pickup fee, and then a monthly fee associated that you can extend based on a timeline. You can take these costs, multiply them out for the duration of the job. You do this for all your general conditions. Where general condition pricing may be a little bit more difficult to estimate is when you're looking at items that are not built in relationship to a certain time frame, but rather in relation to project aspects. For instance, dumpster costs are not invoiced on a monthly rate. Instead, you're charged every time the dumpster becomes full and therefore you have to replace it with an empty dumpster. So on a large project, when you have peak volume of scopes on site, you may be generating a large volume of trash requiring multiple pulls 
fuels throughout the week for a specific dumpster or multiple dumpsters. So if you build your budget to only swap the dumpster out once a month, yet you're swapping it out multiple times a week, you're going to lose money as a result of underestimating the project needs. So overestimating general conditions will make your bid less competitive as you're driving up costs to an owner. Underestimating general conditions may be good for your bid number, but it could be detrimental to the job because you're not going to have the same amount of resources to execute the scope successfully. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good understanding of these general conditions, and I'll provide a general list of soft costs in the description below as a reference. I'll note that general conditions do not include company overhead costs. General conditions are cost specific to executing a specific project, whereas overhead costs are incurred by a company regardless of the ongoing projects. And finally, I'll just suggest that you use your own soft cost historical data from previous jobs to provide better accuracy on future job estimates. So back to general requirements. As I mentioned earlier, general requirements are a fundamental part of the construction specifications. Majority of specification documents follow the CSI master format, which provides sections that are considered divisions within construction. For example, division 03 is concrete, division 04 is masonry, division 08 is doors and windows, etc. So there actually happens to be a division 00 and a division 01. Division 00 is procurement and contracting requirements, which outlines pre-construction procedures. This section talks about instruction to bidders, bid forms, general conditions, supplementary conditions, and more. The division 01 includes submittal procedures, RFI procedures, quality requirements, closeout procedures, training requirements, and much more. So that's the basic difference between general conditions and general requirements. I hope you took something away from this that you can start applying to your career or business. So as always, bye for now. I'm just scratching the surface.